Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay. So, this will be first of the three lectures on Ganita Kaumudi. So, two I will be giving. So, this is the outline where I will first talk about the importance of Ganita Kaumudi <coughs> and some important topics here solutions of quadratic equations, double equations of second and higher degree, uh, rational solutions, then determinations pertaining to mixture of things, then interest calculations, payment and installment. There are some interesting uh, 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 this thing, you know, so methods which are given here which are relevant even today. So, Ganita Kaumudi was composed in 1356 common era by Narayana Pandita as indicated in the final verses of the work. So, it is not clear where he was born or where he flourished. It was uh, this work was edited and published by Padmakar Vivedi in two volumes based in a single manuscript which belonged to his late father the legendary Sudhakar Vivedi in 1930s. Sudhakar Vivedi was a very famous person who edited and translated many of the important works in Indian astronomy and mathematics in from 19th century onwards. He was one of the persons who was involved in the revival, important persons in the revival of interest in uh, the Indian mathematics and astronomy. So, Padmakar Vivedi is his son. <coughs> there is another work of Narayana Pandita called Bija Ganitava Tamsha. Only the first portion of this has been published and based on a single and incomplete manuscript at Benares. So, <coughs> Ganita Kaumudi has been translated by Paramananda Singh, one Paramananda Singh with explanatory notes. It was published in these volumes of Ganita Bharati, there is a journal of Indian mathematics. History of Indian, history of mathematics, history of mathematics for include mostly Indian, but uh, uh, others uh, this thing history of uh, mathematics in other cultures also is there in this. So, it is uh, completely devoted to that history and uh, he published this be between 1998 to 2001. So, it is a very big work. After Bhaskara two, there are two major developments in Indian mathematics. So, this is the one Narayana Pandita's Ganita Kaumudi and other is the Kerala school of mathematics and astronomy mainly during 14th and 17th between 14th and 17th centuries wherein calculus concepts were developed. You have already heard uh, a little bit about it. You will hear it in more detail in the lectures to follow. So, Narayana Pandita carries forward the tradition of mathematics in India substantially. So, there are more formulae, generalizations of earlier results and systematization. So, we in fact, we had seen it you know from Bra Brahmagupta, uh, Sridhara and uh, others carried it forward including of course, Mahavira whose work Ganita Sahara Sangraha we discussed. So, then it was carried forward more by uh, Bhaskaracharya in his two works Bija Ganita and uh, Lilavati. So, we saw that there are many advancements in that compared to the earlier uh, works. So, similarly here also Narayana Pandita carries forward uh, when he um, um, uh, introduces more advances I mean and um, he in fact, it is uh, this thing is the aim is to you know suppose there is some result earlier can I say something more about it can I generalize this result that seems to be the you know way he seems to be working and that is the way it is written. <coughs> And uh, especially there is a big leap in the treatment of combinatorics and magic squares in chapters 13 and 14. Of course, other things are also there. There is a substantial improvement in uh, cyclic quadrilateral laterals than uh, rational figures and so on. But, uh, but and one more very important result about the kth sum, you see, if you carry out the sums of integers, um, first sum, second sum, we already discussed it, he generalizes that. So, apart from those things, the major results are contained in chapter 13 and 14, so which will be dealt with by others. So, it is meant to be a comprehensive text covering most of the prevalent mathematical knowledge in India at the time of composition and making substantial additions to it. 
Okay. So, I will give you a brief summary of the 14 chapters in this work. So, chapter 1 is on measures of weight, length, area, volume, capacity, etcetera, as in other works. So, there are 8 operations, we saw it in Lilavati also addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square, square root, cube, cube root. So, they are described and uh, solutions of more complex linear and quadratic equations are discussed here, because simpler things had already been discussed in earlier works and so he is thinking to generalize them more and make it a little more complex. And chapter 2 is in Vyavahara Ganita or mathematics pertaining to daily life. So, a calculation pertaining to mixture of materials, interest and principal, payment in installments, mixing gold objects with different purities and other problems pertaining to linear indeterminate equations for many unknowns they are considered and there is lot of progress compared to earlier treatments. Example, I will take this interest calculations where payment by installments are considered, I will deal with it a little in detail. Then chapter 3 is an arithmetic and uh, geometric progressions, where the concept of sum of sums is generalized, generalized to the kth sum of the first integers for arbitrary k. So, we had already seen that Aryabhata himself had given the sum, you see. So, sigma 1 plus etcetera n, sum of first integer n integer, that is n into n plus 1 by 2. Then if you take r into r plus 1 by 2, if you sum 1 to n, so that is the second sum. So, like that you can go on. So, he has uh, given the formula for the kth sum, <coughs> it is a very important generalization which is needed for finding infinite series for sin and cosine functions among other things. So, that will be discussed later how it is used and how exactly does it figure. Chapter 4 is in plane geometry where properties of triangles, quadrangles or quadrilaterals, circles, cyclic quadrilaterals etcetera are considered. Now, he introduced a new concept called a third diagonal associated with a cyclic quadrilateral and then area and circumference of the cyclic quadrilateral are discussed. Then chapter 5 to 8, they are, you know, they are on three dimensional geometry, where rules of, uh, for solid figures and capacities of excavated volumes are presented. Then chapter 9 is on Kuttaka procedure for solving linear indeterminate equations of first degree. Of course, I will not deal with it, already it has been done in, uh, in detail. Then chapter 10 is on quadratic indeterminate equations or Varga Prakriti, so which was done earlier, I mean yesterday here. Here a variant of the Chakravada procedure of Jayadeva and Bhaskara is also considered. Yesterday it was mentioned that you know, when you are going from one step to another, this, this P i will come, you know, the auxiliary quantity then you have to choose, choose, choose it such that uh, mod of p i plus 1 whole squared minus g. So, that is minimum. So, it is a small change here that uh, uh, Narayana Pandita considers and you know that Chakravada procedure is due to Jayadeva and Bhaskar, small change is there. Okay. So, then chapter 11 and 12 is on divisors of a number and fractions and chapter 13 is called Anka Pasha or combinatorics, partitions of numbers, sequences of binomial and polynomial co coefficients and various merus. So, I will not be doing much, but little bit I will do, little bit in this I will do, <coughs> but it will be done by others. Then chapter 14 is on magic squares and so basically I will do pertaining to chapters 1 and 12 in what follows, 1 to 12 in what follows. Okay. So, in chapter 1, I will just discuss some you know important things only. This is not a comprehensive you know lecture giving the you know the word, uh, content of Ganita Komudi comprehensively. Whatever important thing uh, is there, I will try to emphasize that. See, for instance, after discussing 8 operations, various simplifying manipulations involving fractions are discussed, and in the earlier text, Sankramana, I already mentioned. So, that is if the sum and difference of a number are given, you can find the number. So, this is Sankramana x plus y is equal to a, x minus y is equal to b, then x is a plus b by 2, x is equal to a minus b by 2. 
So in Ganesha Kaumudi, problems which can be reduced to Sankramana are discussed. For instance, suppose you are given x minus y is equal to b and x squared minus y squared is equal to a. So then you can find x plus y is equal to x squared minus y squared by x minus y is equal to a by b. So x and y can now be solved as we know both x minus y and x plus y. x minus y is given and x plus y we have found out. Similarly, suppose you are given x squared minus y squared and x plus y, x minus y can be found out similarly and you can solve it by Sankramana. <coughs> then little more uh, non uh, trivial, Varga Samasad Vigunat Antara Vargonitat Padam Yogaha, the square root of the difference between try the sum of the squares of two numbers and the square of their difference is their sum. So now suppose you are giving x minus y is equal to b, x squared plus y squared is equal to a, so then x plus y one can see that it will be 2a minus b squared and you can solve it by Sankramana. Similarly, suppose getting more and more little more and more uh, this thing um, difficult. Suppose you are giving x squared minus y squared is equal to a and x squared y squared is equal to b. So then you can find out x squared plus y squared as you know x squared minus y squared whole squared plus 4 x squared y squared whole to the power of half. So you have got x squared minus y squared and x squared plus y squared. So from this x squared plus y squared are obtained and then you can obtain x and y. So then similarly suppose x minus y is given and x y is given. So then x plus y is b squared plus 4 c whole to the power of half and again you can find out x and y by Sankramana. Similarly given x plus y and x y also similarly you can do that and suppose x plus y and x squared plus y squared are known then x minus y is equal to this quantity and you can solve it by Sankramana. So then <coughs> He discusses the solution of quadratic equations. So, this is how what he says Rupotta hata padagre syata mantara vadhau tatas tabhyam pragvat yogaha sadhya syatam sankramato rashi shayage mule nalpam tatkruti rashihi. Pada and agra divided by Rupotta happen to be the so called difference and the so called product respectively. Calculate the sum from them by the methods earlier, the numbers are obtained from them by the method of concurrence. In case pada is negative, the greater the number, the greater of the number is to be taken, the square of that is the number. So whatever he is doing, the Sankramana thing, it is you know leading him on to the quadratic equation solution. So what you have to do solve is, I had already written down equations like this in my previous lecture, ax plus b root x is equal to c. So, A is the rupotha, A is called a rupotha coefficient of x, B is the pada coefficient of this root x and C is called drushya when it is seen. Now find B by A and C by A and suppose the root of the equation is root x, now consider an auxiliary quantity root y when B is negative that is B is equal to minus mod B in this case root x minus root y is equal to this and root x into root y is equal to C by A. So then, I mean, this is not the other root. This is not the other root. It's somewhat different. He is trying to use the thing. So you to find these quantities. Similarly, so then root x plus root y is given. You see, root x minus root y is this. Then root x plus root y will be is giving this. So finally, root x is mod b here b is uh, negative so minus b plus square root of b square plus 4x by 2. So in this root x is a greater quantity out of root x and root y. When b is positive it is implied that this is the solution again they will have the same form is are expressed differently. I mean here please note that instead of minus 4ac normally plus 4ac comes that is because c is in the other side you see. See normally you have got you know ax plus b root x, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So here if you transfer it, it will become minus. So that is why that you know is coming like this. 
okay. I mean at least here he is talking only one root, but I will point out that later he does talk about two roots you know, some problems he does talk about two roots. He wants this I mean the thing to be positive. So, root x is the correct solution using the modern standard way. So, <coughs> various interesting problems are discussed. Akaranya dhanimadri murdni chikenobdhanam sphuradvi jutam rundarda trilavau tadantara chaturbhagaihi tribihi samyutau adhyardeka padadikau nanru tatuhu prithyapta vrundau sakhe jatam tatra chatatrayam pravadame tatpura vrunte kati. So, a group of peacocks along with its half, its one third and three fourths of their difference together with one and a half times the square root of the group standing on top of a mountain and hearing the thunder of clouds surcharged with electricity or dancing with joy. So, the peacocks are 300 in all. Oh friend tell me the number of peacocks in the earlier group. I mean whatever is left you know dancing around that is 300. So, you have to find the final number. So, it is uh, always written you know in a nice uh, uh, example you know which is amusing and uh, which is pleasant to hear these things. So, suppose x is the uh, number of peacocks he says that right what does he say? Along with its half right along with its half Purat Vidyutam okay. Then you also take one third okay one third also you take then three fourths of the difference of this that also you take all these things you multiply by this. So, then 3 by 2 times the root x you know he says together with one and a half times the ah adhyar daika pada dikau okay. So, that is there one and a half times the square root of the ah you see that is there and finally, 300 the total sorry total is uh, 300 what is left after all these that is 300. So, what is the uh, I, mean, I mean total is 300 and what is left is you know we have to what we have to find you know that is the thing sorry I, mean, I did not uh, maybe the peacocks are 300 in all. So, initial number you have to find initial number how many are there that is what you have to find. So, this is the equation. So, finally, you get this. So, if I had using this you get root x is equal to 12 and x is equal to 144. So, if x is equal to 144. So, if you do all these operations you know take this x and then you know half of it again you take and all these things you take and what is the initial number. So, that is 144 which is less than 300. Ah, this was sorry this must be yeah this is x. Ah. Ah, that is missing correct 40 it must be 47 by 12 into x correct yeah plus root x. So, this is the final quadratic equation x you have to supply here yeah that is right ok. So, then he talks about quadratic equations involving successive reminders. So, you also very interesting. So, the rule itself is very simple you know very short ukta niji vide vadantya chesha vidhau jayate rashihi starting from the end by the method stated earlier the process on being performed on the remainders gives the number. So, the you know of course, if you just read this you will not be able to understand what he is trying to say is the following you see. See suppose you have x minus a root x let us say and then and then square take the square root of that. So, some such things may come you know such things may come in some problems you know. So, x minus a root x minus b into square root of this that is given to be something. So, are more complicated things which I will consider soon enough. So, this is solved by putting see you first just put this is equal to y. So, then y minus b root y is equal to c. So, you solve for y and then you have to solve for x from this after solving from y from this you have to plug in this y and solve for x. So, this is the, the, the he is um, giving an example kantayava surata prasanga samiye bhinna cha muktavali 
मुक्तानाच पदद विचरण शय्यापटस्ोपरी तत्शेष से पदम त्रिभागयुगुलेनाढ़्यम प्रियेण हृत तत्शेष से पदम क्षित निपति सूत्रे दिम किं वद ओके सो ड्यूरींग द नमोर स्टजल प्लेफुल क्वारल और वॉट एवर सो द बिलवेट गॉर्लैंड वॉज ब्रोकन दैट इज इंपॉर्ट पर्ल्स वॉज ब्रोकन and twice the square root less one fourth of the pearls were on the cover of the bed okay shaya patasya this thing you know so that is the uh, <coughs> square root of uh, less than 1 by 4 that was there and square root of the rest along with two thirds of this root were seized by the lever tat sheshasya padam tribhaga yuga lenadhyam priyena see so he took this thing and then the rest fell on the ground and two pearls were remaining in the string you see on the so she is wearing a garland of pearls so it is broken so we have to find out how many pearls were there so on the cover of the bed so it is 2 minus 1 by 4 into root x and that is you write it as 7 okay what are you write it as y so now remaining is x minus y initially was x we don't know that then the the lover he is seizing this you know this one he is taking the square root of this plus 2 by 3 times this okay so that is that also we don't know how much he has seized so that you call it as z and after this thing so it x for the initial number y is on the cover of the bed and z is <coughs> um caught by the lover And so remaining is x minus y minus z, so root z prime. Okay, and and what is on the earth? So this root of this, you know, on the earth root of z prime. So that is there, on the earth which has fallen on the earth, is square root of this remaining whatever is remained after the lower has taken there. So he has caught hold of this thing, and after all these, the, the remaining on the string is two. So you have to find out the original number of original number of pearls. so this whatever is remaining as r that is root of z prime you have written plus whatever was on the cover of the bed that is y whatever was um, 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 caught hold of by the uh, lover that is z so root z prime plus y plus z and two was remaining on the garland of the lady herself so that is two the total of that is equal to x that is the original number of pearls so root z prime Plus two is equal to now. If you shift it to this side, x minus y minus z is equal to z prime. Okay, it comes. So now you solve for z prime. So you will get the solution as two. Root z prime is two, so z prime is four. So now x minus y minus z is z prime, and z d is you have already given five by three root of x minus y. So x minus y minus five by three root of x minus y is four. So you solve for x minus y. x minus y will be 9 now y is equal to 7 by 4 root x that is also given so x minus y that is x minus 7 by 4 root x that is equal to 9 from this so you solve for x root x will be 4 and x is equal to 16 so this square roots are coming you know in successive steps you know more and more square roots so that is interesting you can carry on like this so then again some remainder type of equation रूपो तग्नाग्रम योजनाग्रे विधि प्राग्वत मल्टीप्लाई द रूप बै द फर्स्ट रिमैंडर एंड आर्ड द प्रोडक्ट टू दि लास्ट रिमैंडर लाइक दैट सो एसेंशियली ही इज रेफरिंग टू एन इक्वेशन ऑफ दिस फॉर्म एक्स माइनस ए सो देन फ्रैक्शन ऑफ दिस एंड सब्ट्रैक्टेड फ्रॉम दिस देन फ्रैक्शन ऑफ दिस एंड सब्ट्रैक्टेड फ्रॉम दिस लाइक दैट यू नो फाइनली यू आर हैविंग दिस काइंड ऑफ एन इक्वेशन एक्स इन टू सम क्वांटिटी माइनस जे इन टू रूट एक्स a into some quantity plus d so he is giving the solution for this so if you give a take an example take up an example then it will be clear ganesham padmena trinayana hari brahma dinapan vilomaihi shesham shaihi vishaya lava purvaischa cha kamalam padena pujyai kena cha guru padam bhoja yugalam sarojena chakshva druta makila mamboja nichayam Ganesha was worshipped with one lotus flower, Padme, na. Shiva, Hari, Brahma, Dinapan is, you know, the, the maker of day. 
that is sun for worship with one fifth one four one third and one half of what remains successively below my ye shesham sahi you see successively kamalan kamalam padena pujya kamala was worship with the square root of the lotus flowers in the beginning ekena cha guri padam bhoja yugalam sarojena the two feet of the teacher resembling the lotus flowers per worship with one lotus flower rutam akila mamboja nichayam quickly say the number of lotus flowers in the collection so so, so let x be the number of lotus flowers so ganesha is worshiped with one okay so the remainder after that is x minus 1 then shiva was worshiped with one fifth of this so one fifth of x minus 1 so after the worshiping ganesha and shiva what you are left with is x minus 1 minus 1 by 4 5 into x minus 1 and hari is worshiped with 1/4 of this so after the worshiping ganesha shiva and hari what you are left with is this x minus 1 minus 1 by 4 x minus 1 minus 1 by 4 this thing okay so brahma is worshiped with 1/3 of what remains after worshiping ganesha shiva and hari 1 by 3 of this thing so after the uh, worshiping these four okay the what is remaining is this and sun is worshiped with half of this so after uh, gan worshiping ganesha shiva hari brahma and sun so r4 minus 1 by one of these things okay and kamala was worshiped with root x and remaining is 1 okay so what you are getting is this kind of equation x my this you will get this equation you have to just be little patient that is all nothing more is required in this so you get this kind of an equation so i mean this is precisely the form that he is discussing in his you know as a solution so you get x is equal to 6 by solving this this quadratic equation finally you end up with that and root x is 6 so x is 36 so on that type of quadratic equation he discusses this kind of a thing so these are all very straight forward i don't want to discuss this so he gives an example of this okay so then he talks various double equations of second and higher order degree equations so some of them were discovered discussed earlier also so for instance if you have x squared plus y squared plus 1 is equal to u squared and x squared minus y squared plus 1 is equal to v squared must also be a square x is equal to m squared by 2 and y is equal to m that is the solution and uh, suppose this is equal to u squared or v squared this one so then the solution will be this kind of a thing and the solution of x plus, x plus y is equal to u, u squared means you know it is a square of a number x minus y is again a square of a num integer and x plus y y plus 1 is again a square of an integer so this the solution will be this so like that is so on he goes on particularly important is the various things you know they are not trivial at all you know you have to go through this so next he goes you know in a one systematic set of you know equations which have got this integral solutions ghana yukta ghana yuti bhakte kruti yuti yuti kruti ghata hate twiste ghana yuti yuti ghana tulya kruti yuti yuti kruti vadam rashyo ho of course it sounds also fairly interesting so the the translation you know without going through this i mean it's you can go through this you know we we take the slides what he is saying is the following you know see let uh, what we are having is so you have have two numbers x and y you have to have solution of x cube plus y cube is equal to x squared plus y squared okay so you have you want to find rational solutions for these not trivial not at all trivial right so is given if you take m and n to be any integers then this is a solution of this equation and x cube plus y cube is equal to x plus y whole squared and x cube plus y cube is equal to xy so then if you take any integers m and n and if you take this x and y like this then you get this kind of thing so ghana yuti yuti ghana is ghana yuti is sum of the ganas cubes yuti ghana is the 
cube of the sum. So, that is the kind of thing you know he is doing. So, similarly the solution of this is integral solution you will be having this kind of a form and lastly x, x, x plus y whole cube is equal to x y. So, this is the kind of solution you will have ok. Then he discovers the consider the rule of inversions and uh, all this rule of proportions and all that in uh, great detail. So, I will not have time to do this and the rule of proportions also we have got some very interesting things mixed quantities and various proportions you are lending money at various interest and you know suppose you are giving many people are giving then suppose their principal plus profit is equal then what is the proportion what is the you know ratio in which they are lending money. So, they are all very interesting problems. So, I do not have time. So, I will uh, one particular maybe I will take up one one or two these things. See suppose interest problems let principles capitals P 1 and P 2 be lent out for time T 1 and T 2 months at the same rate of interest and let the corresponding interest be I 1 and I 2. Then out of 7 quantities P 1, P 2 or T 1, T 2, I 1, I 2, 2 can be determined from the sum of them and the other 4 are considered as fixed. So, that is a very interesting way of uh, this thing. generalization of you know direct uh, interest kind of uh, calculations. So, what is happening is that, so what the rule says is very any one sum out of you know, see suppose that this principles P 1, P 2, the time for lending is T 1, T 2, the interest out of them is I 1, I 2 ok. See suppose you are given any one sum out of this you know I 1 plus I 2, T 1 plus T 2, P 1 plus P 2, P 1 plus T 2, P 2 plus T 1, I 1 plus T 1 or I 2 plus T 2 or I 1 plus P 1, I 2 plus P 2 is known. The rest 4 ingredients are known, then 2 comprising the sum can be found separately. So, I mean these are all you know clearly this is you know where the mathematics has reached the stage where they are doing some things you know which are not directly relevant you see nobody will give the you know sum of the principle and time. But to see you know that uh, generally how one can solve this problem using mathematical prowess you see. So, you should have the mathematical prowess to solve this kind of equation. So, that is why he is trying to solve this kind of equation. See suppose you are given I 1 plus I 2 P 1 T 1 P 2 T 2. So, you have to find I 1 and I 2 separately ok. So, you are given the principles and the time length corresponding to these they are given and the sum of the interest is given. Then you have to find I 1 and I 2. So, then you use the fact that they are lent at the same rate, rate is the same. So, I 1 is P 1 T 1 R by 100, I 2 is P 2 T 2 by R by 100. So, I 1 by I 2 is this and finally, so you get one equation you know in terms of I 1 and I 2, I 1 plus I 2 by I 2 this is the equation. So, one the I 1 plus I 2 is already given, you will have one more equation involving I 1 linear equation involving I 1 and I 2. So, you can find them separately. So, that is what is done. See for instance he says the sum of interest masaina shatasya kriyat shastair varshasya yat phalam phalayoho yoge chatvarimshad rupa yutam me phalam kataya tabyam pakshad vitaye mitho vimishre prutak krute brui. The sum of the interest of 100 in a month added to that of 60 in a year is at the same rate is 41. So, tell me the interest separately you see. So, suppose P 1 is given P 2 is there T 1 is 1 T 2 12 and I 1 plus I 2 is given ok. See suppose you are given posed like this I am sure most people will be frustrated you know I mean they are all simple principles, but still you have to use this logic and all that. So, you you, you had to find you use these equations you get one more equation in I, I 2 you know you will find that I 1 will be uh, I 2 will be 36 and uh, I 1 will be 5. So, similarly if any of these other quantities you know 
P1 plus I2, P2 plus I1, T1 plus I2, T2 plus I1, P1 plus T1, P2 plus T2, they are known, sorry, there may be a comma here. So, then also other things can be determined, okay. Some of them will involve some quadratic equations, okay. See, for instance, you are given P2, T1, T2, I1 and P1 plus I2. So, you have to find out P1 and I2 you have to find. So, I1 by I2 is this, remember the rates are into equal. So, you get P1 I2 is equal to I1 P2 these things. So, from this you can find out P1 minus I2, right. If P1 I2 is this, then P1 minus I2 is this, square root of P1 plus I2 whole square minus 4 P1 I2. This is a simple identity, you see. And P1 plus I2 is already given. So, you have found P1 plus I2, uh, P1 minus I2 already knew P1 plus I2. So, P1 and I2 can be found by some Sankramana. So, this is the way things are done. So, intermediate steps various kinds of you know quadratic equations etcetera will come, one has to or square roots etcetera will come. So, these are the kind of things, he is giving some examples of that. So now, I think this is a, I found it interesting. So I will discuss some payment in installments, you know, which is discussed by uh, Brahma Gupta. So we already see the interest calculations, even in Aryabhatiya it is there. Interest calculation is there. Ganesha Sara Sangraha it is there. Uh, of course, Bhaskara Charya's Leela also contains. So here also he contains, but you know, as I told you, he advances it more. So he will talk of, you know, payment by installments and what you know very close to this equated monthly installment, he will come to that. So, that is what I want to discuss. So, he says the capital is multiplied by the fixed period of installment is divided by the amount of installment less the interest. The quotient determines the time of being free from debt. So, this is what is this verse says. So, suppose the amount lent is P the amount of installment is A, okay, and period of installment is number of months per installment, you see. So, he may be given once in two months or once in three months or whatever it is. Let that be T and let the total time for being free from debt is capital T, NT let us say, okay. So, then in this case, say interest per period of installment is I prime and interest for total duration of debt is you have to multiply by N, okay. N installment periods are there n into i prime. So, the amount due after time t is p plus n i prime, right, n installments and i prime is the interest per installment which you have calculated, you know, which uh, the uh, lender is specifying and the amount paid is n a because he is paying n installments of a each. So, p plus n i prime is equal to n a. So, n the number of installments is given by n t is a p t by a minus i prime. So, this is what is stated in the rule, okay. So, here everything is simple interest only, compound interest is not coming. So, this is how you calculate, this of course is simple enough. So, some examples are considered for this. So, again you can go on like this. Now, he will discuss a more realistic uh, uh, computation. See here you are paying in installments, okay. See your P, P principal is P, okay, and you are told, see you are paying it in N installments, okay, to write it like this of A each, okay. So, total intro, intro, interest you have paid is equal to you know uh, this uh, n into n even amount per installments n i prime kind of a thing okay and finally you are giving p plus n i prime so p plus n i prime you are giving principal plus the interest but you are not paying at the end you know you are paying it in installments in the beginning itself you are paying you see here you are paying 1 by n of this and so on, you know. So, that means you are not getting any benefit for paying it earlier, 
okay suppose for 5000 rupees you have taken a loan and suppose 10% interest okay so then after one year so you have to pay 5500 so suppose, suppose you are paying 5500 by 12 you know every month see then you are losing because you could have paid 5500 rupees at the end you know and you could have done something with your money so you are not getting any benefit from paying earlier in installment so that is what he is considering now okay so he says you know so this the rule next rule contains pertains to the installment amount being adjusted only towards payment he is considering only installment amount adjusted towards payment of capital he has to pay the interest also the rule gives expression for the amount of interest to be paid in addition to monthly installments being paid to clear the capital so let the amount lent be p the installment amount is a and installment period is t months okay and the rate of interest is t um, or interest or percent per month so if the amount is cleared in n installments so p is n prime a where n prime is um, a p by a okay p by a the one sorry rate of interest is uh, if the amount is no it should be uh, sorry n a only okay. no, no. Uh, if the amount is cleared in n prime installments okay so this must be n prime okay I am giving prime so that it may not be an integer. Okay, if the amount is cleared in n prime installments, p is equal to n prime a. Okay, to emphasize that it may not be an integer, I am putting it as n prime. So n prime is p by a. Okay, so this this a is only for payment of principal. Interest is separately paid. Okay, so this is a different problem he is considering. So interest is separately paid, but a is paid only to clear the principal. So total time for being free from debt is n prime into t. So that is p t by a. Okay, suppose t installments is clearing. Uh, p is the uh, uh, n prime is the number of installments, and installment period is t months. So total time is n prime t. So n prime is p by a. So it is p t by a. Total this is the total time. So n prime need not be an integer. That's what I wanted to say. N prime is n plus let us say f by a, n is an integer. No, 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 the number of installment which is a fractional number. Yes, 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 that is what I am coming to that, I am coming to that, yes. So, n is integral okay, and n prime is fractional, that is you know he may take two and a half months or two months and one tenth of a month to clear, so that is allowed, yeah. n prime is n plus f by a, you write it like that. So, p by a is this. So, p is n a plus f, where f is f than a. Okay. The principle is n into, I mean, it is where nothing, p is n prime a, n prime number of installments, a is the installment amount. N, n prime is not an integer. So, which I write as n a plus f. Okay. So, consider the amount p as made up of n a and f. Consider the integral part n a first. You see, n is integer. So, at time t, installment amount a is being paid. Okay. Okay, so this is the installment period. So here a is paid. Okay, so then the interest should be the entire amount. The amount of interest now he is you know expected to give for this is n because the whole money is there. See, here whole money is here. I will talk about other part of principle separately. So you have to give the interest for the whole thing. So interest at time t. That is at the, at the first step is n a into r t by 100 because and now at this stage an amount a is already paid to clear the principal amount a is paid to clear the principal so the amount due at the beginning of the second installment is n a minus a or n minus 1 a so at this time the principal owed see it is n minus 1 a so at the time of next installment, you have to calculate the interest for this. So, at time 2t, 2t, we have to calculate the interest for the amount n minus 1a. Remember that t is the amount period of installment, okay. t is the period of installment. Okay. 
So, interest at time 2 t is n minus 1 a into r t by 100 and similarly you can go on at some stage r ok. After r periods of installments are this thing elapsed. So, then it will be n minus r into a that is the amount of principal which is being which is owed by the debtor right. So, interest at r t is n minus r minus 1 rather ok because this is the first full thing is this thing. So, r minus 1 you have to put. So, this is the amount which is owed. So, that you have to calculate the interest for this ok. So, n minus r minus 1 into a into r t by 100 and interest at time n t of course, after that you know he is uh, <coughs> this will be just a at this at this point you see at n ok. So, only a will be left here that is the amount principal which he has to this thing. So, that is all will be cleared there ok. So, it is r t by a into r t by 100. So, total interest for the integral part I am only taking the integral part you see. So, p is the you know remember p is n prime a is n plus fraction into a. So, that is how we discusses it. So, total interest for the integral part is n plus n minus 1 etcetera up to 1. So, you are getting the arithmetic progression here. So, n into n plus 1 by 2 into a into r t by 100 and the uh, end of duration n t see now after the duration the principal due is f sorry this must be n a plus f n a plus you should write it like this. So, after this this is still left. So, for that you have to pay the interest also this will be cleared in time f by a t, but the debtor has to pay the interest for the entire period for this you know because this we did not include in this calculation we had only considered the integral part we have to has to pay the interest for the whole thing. The total interest to be paid is n into n plus 1 by 2 into a plus p f by a into r t by 100. So, the, this n is called the pada f by e is called agra and this quantity is called mula pinda. So, this is the so this is the amount he has to pay apart from the money he has given to clear the principal you see at every installment he is giving he has to give this interest of course, he does not specify when this interest will be paid Maybe every month it will be uh, paid you know in installment. So, this is the thing. So, here is the number of installments you see after this because a is specified a is specified. So, the fraction so this is a fractional month you know. So, this is a fraction the whole thing is cleared in a fractional number of an integral plus a fractional number of this. So, that is precisely what is now these are rule that is there skandaka bhaktam vittam labdam pada samna kamcha vishesham shah etcetera. So, what he is saying the amount or capital principal rent is divided by the amount of installment the integral part of the quotient is called pada the remaining part is called agra so on and so forth you just have to this is what you have to what is yeah this is these are the thing total interest is what you have to remember this is the formula and that is expressed in the verse. Hmm. Yeah, pada is the yeah. That's right. N is pada period is yeah. The total number, total number of this, you know, the integral part of this uh, number of installments. So that is pada here. Yeah. So you are given an example. So then, <coughs> so now we consider this little more than this thing of this. So here he is paying. See the amount A he is paying per installment that is only for clearing the principal. The interest he is doing separately. So, that is why we did the this thing you know whatever amount of principal he has to pay amount he has to pay that we are considered and then interest we are calculated separately. So, now he does take the thing also into account whatever amount is A he is being pay, is paying. So, that is partly towards principal and partly towards interest. So, that is what he is considering next. 
we consider the case when the installment A is the interest and the outstanding amount plus the payment as a part of the principal. So, in the following rule gives the time of being free from debt. Pratimasika palashuddho moolam moolat prutak prutak jahiyat sheshasya masika palam vishodayet masiko pana yat sheshana nena moola vishesham aptam to masayuk kala. Subtract the principal part of each monthly installment free from the capital successively. This gives the number of complete months and the residue of capital if any and subtract the interest of residue due for a month from the amount of monthly installment. Divide the residue of the capital by number. The quotient added to the number of complete months is the time of being free from debt. What is he trying to say? See let the amount of principal be A, rate of interest is uh, R percent. So, you call R prime as RT by 100, T is the period of installment. At the time of first installment interest due is R prime P, right? P is the this thing and monthly installment is A and principal part of monthly installment is A minus R prime P because interest is this principal part is this. So, amount due after first installment pay is P minus this. See you have paid this P and then you have calculated the principal part how much you have cleared, cleared you know that is given clearly by this. So, this is P 1 is this. Then the interest for this at the time of the second installment is R prime into P 1 not R prime into P and amount paid is A. So, then you have to find principal part whatever is paid you know principal part of the monthly installment is A minus R prime P 1 and amount due after payment of second installment is this and amount pay due after payment of n installments will be this kind of a thing you know some kind of a geometric progression will come. According to the rule we go on till r is equal to p n is less than a or is the remainder of the residue he talks about. So, it takes less than an amount of period to clear r with its interest okay, because this is less than a. So, amount of installment you know per if it is um, full installment period you know you have to pay a, but only a small part he has to pay less than a. So, that is the, all those things can be calculated. Then that, uh, the which P is principal. Uh, so Sorry, principal is A, I and mean, I should have put it as P. Amount of principal is P actually, correct. A is the same as P. I used it here, I did not use it afterwards, yeah. P is the principal, yeah. Okay, that fraction can be calculated. I if I give an example, in the, then it will be very clear to you. See, Narayana's concept of installment is very similar to the modern concept of equated monthly installments. The only difference is that in modern times, the time for clearing the debt is fixed okay? and of course, compound interest is there, time for clearing the debt is there and then you fi fix the uh, this thing equated monthly installment you see based on compound interest. Here the amount of installment is fixed and the time is uh, being uh, this thing you know calculated and taking into account the fact that uh, of course, compound interest he does not talk about, but still it is you know whatever amount you are clearing that has been you know taken into account. Okay. So, are giving relief for that. So, it is realized that you know principle is you know being clear. So, if I give an example it may be slightly sorry we are run out of time let me do it. A rich man lends somebody 100 at the rate of 10 percent per month. The debtor gives a monthly installment of 50 including interest. Oh friend tell me the debtor's time of being free from debt. So, P is 100 the rate of interest is 10 okay 10 percent per month high but anyway so a is 50 amount of installment so at the time of first monthly installment interest is 100 into 10 1 by 10 right that is how this thing he is paying so 10 so payment is 50 so he is clearing the interest of 10 so payment towards principal part so the rest is payment towards principal part 40 so, amount, amount due after first installment is 100 minus 40 is 60. Okay. So, you get the point. So, after this thing 100 years taken. So, after one period of installment one month 10 you know is the interest. So, he is paying 50. So, if you subtract that 10 okay. So, 40 he has paid for specifically for clearing the principal. So, principal now will be new principal. So, that will be equal to 
50 or 40, sorry, 60, yeah. yeah, okay. And interest for this month, you know, for one month, that is 6, okay. So, after one month, the interest will be 6, okay. So, in that case, the payment is 50, okay. So, the payment uh, uh, towards principal is 44. Okay, so that is uh, <coughs> six forty-four. So how much is left? So the six so the is left. Okay, so that sorry, uh, yeah, forty-four. Yeah, so the amount that is that is sixty minus forty-four. He he was you know so forty-four he has uh, paid towards principal. Sixty was what was owed for the principal. So sixteen is left now. The new principal is sixteen. So he was. You know, he has to pay a principal amount of 16 at the end of 2 months. Now, 16 it is less than 50, okay. So, interest and R is equal to 16 for a month is 1.6. So, fraction of the month is required to clear this debt with interest R. So, the fraction of the debt one can find out. So, that is 4 divided by 12.1, you see. So, after this, see the fraction of the month required to clear the debt, you see. See, after this. See after this only this fraction 4 by 12 point month, 1 month is required to clear the remaining principal amount 16 and the interest on that. So, that is taken care of this in the denominator. So, if you go through this it will be. So, that is how he has done this. So, in everything as I was told you it is you know some more advancement is there and some more generalizations and uh, some new methods and new principles are the references are given here. Thank you.